फ्रेंड्स इलेवंथ मॉड्यूल देर वर टोटल ट्वेल्व मॉड्यूल्स इन रिस्क बेस इंजीनियरिंग अप टू इलेवंथ मॉड्यूल वी हैव कम एंड दिस इज द लास्ट मॉड्यूल दैट इज रिस्क बेस इंजीनियरिंग एप्लीकेशन एंड द crux of the what we learned all those uh, 11 weeks uh, is coming over here how we can use this technique uh, for uh, for uh, uh, risk reduction and the list is risk uh, optimization and in a such a manner that our safety and of course if it is applied to security systems also uh, uh, security aspects also can be improved so uh, this uh, that is why in this lecture or in this module um, initially i am revisiting what we learned all through not everything but some core concepts uh, so that um, you uh, you better appreciate how whatever we have learned and we are, we are able to implement it and uh, and using it uh, uh, for a purpose uh, where the organizations which was depending on risk based engineering they got benefited so uh, uh, but then there are two components one is that you see actual benefit that plant life is extended and you can run the plant for 10 years so it is a net benefit second thing is r&d is also important and so in some of the lectures i will be discussing r&d areas like uh, uh, risk monitor uh, what all goes into Uh, because there is a traditional way of developing risk monitor but here in the in this risk based engineering we see different uh, i i would say uh, updating of the original methods uh, updating of the data and each data even though if i put it in one line that i got this data updated from probabilistic to failure rate uh, because of certain issues but it takes months together because so many data and all but then those things we felt Uh, that uh, so you learn where all we have done updating and uh, improvements uh, in the traditional approaches so uh, let's go to the uh, scope what is the so this slide i'll i'll try to explain uh, what is the scope of uh, our presentation uh, so we have here first i'll introduce uh, and just one or two slide uh, i'll try to brush up what we have picked up uh, and when the application comes there it will get reinforced okay so because it is a application of risk based engineering so uh, then i have this uh, module uh, that lecture uh, so introduction is one independent lecture then we have uh, risk based isi in service inspection program probably the sequence might change but that is scope remains actually you know uh, then i have risk monitor a separate lecture then risk based approach to life extension um, this is going to be very important for all of us you to see because this was not only that in real time we did uh, we uh, we developed a methodology but then it had two components one is that r&d component and uh, other one was one other one was the application component uh, in the application component the risk based approach to life extension it got validated because the plant for which uh, we performed the uh, uh, this uh, aging management and life extension uh, strategy planning uh, this plant got 10 years extension from regulator so that means it is not that one or two ngc we did the analysis and modeling the the stakeholder that is the brit or isomet plant they submitted that strategy to regulator and regulator gave them 10 years extension so this whole approach got validated and this is a very uh, effective application because life management is a very complex issue uh, so that that was the thing then surveillance tests inter interval optimization you, you remember during olden times uh, test interval optimization uh, was uh, was based on either vendors specification or uh, experience like in certain plants they will try to acquire the data uh, okay let's take the example of diesel generator how frequently it, it should be tested and uh, take the case of a pump how frequently it, it should be started and stopped uh, and these are these are very important for safety systems actually because uh, safety system should be tested periodically uh, and uh, they should comply with the uh, there is a document called technical specification uh, 
uh, and technical specification nothing but uh, spirit of the uh, the deterministic safety uh, whatever has was learnt over the years and every institution learned from there and then it gets percolated down uh, to surveillance test interval, uh, sorry, uh, technical specification and then uh, we have risk based design evaluation um, uh, this particular thing is basically to bring clarity where we are over conservative and what is required in the present context so these are the uh, uh, here is the scope of all our modules so i'll be uh, discussing only five lectures in detail others i'll uh, i'll combine them into uh, one and see that those things so uh, uh, let us say from application point of view uh, what was the traditional approach uh, for design operation and regulation uh, so we ha we had this uh, deterministic approach where defense in depth was central to um, all our uh, design operation maintenance and regulation job um, and the at the core it was basically conservative in nature and uh, defense in depth principles applications that include redundancy diversity fail safe criteria uh, and uh, you know uh, even having a different level of barriers and uh, uh, protections so these were the things and the, with that the industry really did a good job actually you know because uh, nuclear plants are still uh, uh, considered the safest of, uh, if, uh, if you compare with uh, not only energy system or bit with any system uh, for that uh, uh, for the sake of argument okay then <coughs> um th there is a general consensus that pha approach uh, now uh, when we when we use on a sustained basis only one approach uh, one thing is that you might come out of some weaknesses of that approach or it it might happen that we developed the confidence in that approach and we do not want to accept this approach so pra took a lot of time to get accepted and now the there is a general consensus that psa or probabilistic safety assessment or probabilistic risk assessment they are used interchangeably i will be using because we are talking about the risk based approach i will be using the, the phrase probabilistic risk assessment so uh, pra in, uh, now uh, pra uh, approach is considered matured enough and the validation of this is uh, uh, risk informed approach where uh, ps uh, pra is at the core uh, is becoming slowly part of uh, regulation uh, where everything gets uh, validated uh, uh, you know by an independent agency called regulators you know uh, and then there are applications which are uh, also coming like if i say there are um, tens of uh, risk monitors they are uh, part of uh, plants or um, the optimization of uh, um, in, in service inspection program i mean it has been coming uh, over the years but slowly slowly the procedure is getting uh, uh, you know modified based on the new data new experience and the models actually <coughs> um, and then um, uh, so so risk based engineering has that advantage which has come from the maturity of pra number 1 that is deterministic probabilistic they are operating together um, they complement and supplement each other earlier it was uh, it was uh, yeah, the view was different Uh, so uh, now both are complementing each, each other uh, because of uh, prs uh, power in term, in terms of quantification in terms of logically putting the facts and figures uh, and you know having rational with you for any decision making so and then one for, there was one more frontier opened uh, that is new technologies in risk based engineering and th there the physics of failure approach um, uh, you know uh, it is a matter of time that this physics of failure approach and uh, uh, prognostics and health management and risk based engineering uh, they will become part and parcel of uh, uh, routine uh, design operation and maintenance actually so uh, so we can say these are futuristic it at present they are being uh, sort of with lot of uh, uh, consideration they are being accepted you know so now uh, uh, we have seen the uh, part of risk based approach that totally uh, we have come to a level where we tend to be less conservative more rational base 
why more rational ways because we have connectivity uh, the plant is represented by the model uh, that is pra model and uh, that is where how one component is connected to other component so in a way um, we can really assess with the quantification the sensitivity of uh, one component uh, uh, that impact it has got on the overall plant safety or liability so that is something which is possible through a pra model uh, and then of course uh, we have the transparency uh, how uh, uh, how you are able to give your argument ki one plant is safer than the other plant okay uh, you can give the core damage frequency but then core damage frequency how it has come bring your data my data we'll compare and say uh, and then we'll assess data uncertainty also and we'll come to one task and then we, we can easily compare it because it is the mathematics which is talking you know uh, of course even today uh, especially for common cause failure and human factor uh, data uh, is one of the one of the limitation um, and uh, that's why international organization like uh, nuclear energy nc iaea they are working and even at a national level also a lot, lot of efforts are going on to collect the data and, uh, and this particular applications they are uh, nothing but they have come from the my book myself and professor pet we wrote that book risk based engineering 2018 so uh, if you want to ha get uh, more details uh, either you can uh, revisit the paper for which reference has already been given in the book or you can refer the book itself i, I think the book itself will su suffice for you so you get everything in one place actually uh, now uh, what is this risk based engineering framework okay um, here we have done integration basically between deterministic and this slide is basically uh, to give an overview so that we come to the application part you know because this framework was discussed in the first lecture probably you might um, well, there is a uh, you know you might have forgotten so here we can see that um, and then uh, then it is a um, whole, so these two when they join because both have their own strength okay uh, and then so we can say that we get a holistic solution you know holistic solution means most of the component of risk are addressed in a in a adequate manner i will not say fully in an adequate manner that we can we can have uh, put uh, they are becoming more credible than uh, if these two approaches would have uh, would have been operating in isolation you know so um, uh, so both both of them so the, what happens is uh they serve uh, for plant demonstration now wherever data is there we can talk about them in operation and all but when the new plant is there uh, we built uh, we apply this uh, methodology of course the data will come from generic source or uh, uh, or, or you know or similar plant operation uh, but then thing is uh, it was it has the experience has been that uh, uh, given that uh, if and buts on data the the estimate um, will be the best estimate i mean i mean we, in deterministic we have heard about the best estimate approach so best estimate approach and there is no other uh, solution so that way it is very useful <clears throat> and then as i said uh, that uh, uncertainty uh, module phm module pf module they really enrich the risk based engineering approach and uh, and then we have some apl applications and uh, uh, let's see how far we have gone to the safety demonstration um, so to take the action actually you know so uh, let us just brush up deterministic approach it is a defense in depth principle application of redundancy diversity single failure criteria it is a conservative approach and factor of safety as far as the uh, engineering components are concerned is the is the is the key uh, key uh, because uh, th this is where we try to capture the uh, uncertainties and then it tends since we do not have a quantified model of uncertainty uh, then we tend to be or uh, uh, conservative so uh, so the so the, so you'll see that uh, this conservatism though it serves and it has served for, for uh, over tens of uh, years it has served the purpose but when the plant becomes uh, uh sort of if the uh, if uh, uh, if we have the factor uh, conservatism more then somewhere it gets reflected into the plant uh, availability or it can become even self defeating also 
ओके सो वन हेज टू बी रियली हेव द आइडिया वाई आई एम टेलिंग इज ऑप्टिमम लेवल वी हेव टू रीच इन टर्म्स ऑफ द कंजर्वेटिज्म ऑल्सो एंड दैट ओनली कम्स वेन वी हैव ए स्टेटमेंट ऑफ अनसर्टनिटी देर आर मेनी इश्यूज विद अनसर्टनिटी मॉडलिंग ऑल्सो बट एटलीस्ट वी हेव मेड द बिगिनिंग फॉर क्वांटिफिकेशन ऑफ अनसर्टनिटीज गिविंग द अपर अपर एंड लोअर बाउंड द डिजाइन कोड एंड स्टैंडर्ड्स सो दे आर द गवर्निंग गवर्निंग बुक्स विच विच आवर डिजाइनर्स दे रेफर एंड मल्टीपल बेरियल्स ऑफ लेवल ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन एंड सेफ्टी बिकॉज यू नो एट द एंड ऑफ द डे पब्लिक शुड नॉट गेट अफेक्टेड वेन अवर प्लांट्स आर ऑपरेटिंग इन रियल लाइफ सो ए वेरी रबस्ट मेथडोलॉजी आई थिंक द डिटर्मिस्टिक कैन बी रेफर्ड एज अ डिटर्मिस्टिक अप्रोच रबस्ट अप्रोच बिकॉज टाइम इट इज टाइम टेस्टेड Uh, we have seen that our plants got uh, this feeder of the slow, um, uh, safest system compared to any other engineering or any other um, any other system uh, which is like at mega level operating at mega level and uh, regulatory oversight is form and uh, part of the deterministic approach the, the way it is there for probabilistic approach also so what is the framework this figure you would have seen in the first lecture itself but it is so important because here we show the basic tenets of our um, uh, our risk based approach so uh, let us say uh, we are trying to talk about uh, uh, let us come down to a level ki we are trying to tra- talk about uh, about solving a problem in a plant in the plant you know uh, at system level we have already handled so we have one problem Uh, either we want to increase redundancy or we want to reduce redundancy also or we want to uh, uh, change the operating policy uh, let us say uh, we we want to uh, test the some system uh, let us say for uh, presently we are doing in 3 months but we want to test the system in 6 months why because uh, we are we feel that the uh, the system testing mo- uh, you know when we are testing the system we are aging the component number 1 number 2 uh, uh, when we t- test the system it is very resource intensive some system testing it takes uh, a day or so so it, it is resource and manpower and of course so many equipment gadgets logistics and all so there is a proposal and the intuition that is the there is a consensus at organization level ki this testing frequency should increase from uh, if it was 3 months let's say to 6 months okay uh, how to do that uh, because it is a part of tex- technical specification that you know it should be tested like this and the earlier uh, approach for uh, scheduling the testing was based on um, uh, some uh, criteria uh, wherein the experts will take a call uh, which plant has got what uh, protocol for testing and all that and from there we pick up uh, something or you know we use our experience of 30 40 but then uh, the question is when you have failure data with you when you have the know the degradation level also uh, then why not uh, use this t uh, a factor uh, for increasing or decreasing and do an optimization whatever comes out accept it so uh, here comes is one problem statement we have to define problem in such a manner that it it is really effective for uh, uh, for the following steps when we want to do perform or we want to do the validation also so uh, the deterministic component uh, as i said we have been talking uh, time and again and the probabilistic component they join hand together and they give rise to the integrated risk assessment okay and once we do that we don't change any criteria or anything we see whether deterministic criteria and goal as it is and probabilistic criteria and goal they are meeting um, say if a uh, core damage frequency goal is 10 to the power minus 5 so it should m- meet whatever change you want to do okay if anything is there on the uh, increase in core damage frequency it should not be more than a percentage uh, where there is a international con- consensus or it should not increase at all and so like that and in deterministic um, it should meet all its process variable the way it was like uh, you know flow temperature uh, uh, pressure and you know various conditions are met so that core uh, uh, the core safety or uh, plant safety is ensured uh, then uh, 
sometimes it, it, it is definitely suggested that enhanced monitor, monitoring is required when we are increasing the test interval or anything. So then the way regulator suggests, okay, you are going for this change, good, but then you do a closed monitoring. This is a very, a very well accepted practice. Then again you try to meet, revisit the thing and see whether goals and other things are meeting and finally acceptance and index change we have here. So this is risk based engineering framework I discussed and then uh, how probabilistic safety assessment operates probably we had devoted two uh, weeks for this but then I will just sum up in one slide or one and a half slide plant familiarization, list of initiating event the data collection, event tree analysis, fault tree analysis, even by graphics you would like we be able to recollect what, what we discussed. Then finally when do, do uh, fault tree analysis integrate with the event tree analysis, we get accident sequences and then accident sequences once we do quantification we get um, core damage frequency for the plant with all the for all the initiating events, uh, uncertainty characterization, upper bound, lower bound, there is they are very important element of uh, uh, PSA. And then output is code range frequency, risk importance measure we can estimate. We have studied the risk importance measure also and finally application of uh, any change for real time scenario. So this, this component, application of uh, this, uh, this thing to real time scenario that we will be discussing. And finally for any change, regulatory appro approval is required. So that is a, uh, and regulatory approval and ORC, uh, both are required actually. So that is what and then application. I um, will not discuss all the applications but a few of them which are important, integrated evaluation of plant design. Even a plant design can be evaluated uh, though when we do PRA we know that where and what can be changed and all but then there is an integrated evaluation of the plant. Then surveillance test interval allow as I, I was discussing uh, it can be and I think we might discuss a very brief example on this. Uh, management of plant configuration uh, that is through risk monitor or any other method and then identification and prioritization of system structures and component this in uh, in risk based application this particular uh, uh, point is there in all the changes what we do actually so and then plant, plant live extraction i have discussed about it and uh, and then uh, evaluation of criteria uh, so we have some criteria that for for the uh, primary shutdown system these are the qualities that are required but if we feel using um, and the plant was designed during deterministic procedure, if we feel okay, we have a probabilistic argument to give it, so then we, it can be revisited and the retrofitting and all those things, uh, we can see what kind of benefit we get, accidents, precursor analysis is very important. In fact, in prognosis, what we do is we do precursor monitoring only. So before that precursor analysis is required. Uh, that you know before an incident happen what were the symptoms that were available so that we could have uh, uh, we could have uh, uh, learned from them and uh, uh, check the pro, uh, uh, weakness at that point of time before the um, any accident or incident becomes reality and uh, planning for postulated emergency scenarios and then outline for uh, risk by applic application is uh, we have the five uh, scope of risk based application, uh, introduction, risk based framework, overview of uh, deterministic and probabilistic uh, approach and applications. This was the our design that we had there actually. Thank you very much.